good evening friends we will start our session soon uh, our speaker dr sk malhotra who was a very renowned scientist and um, worked in various capacities in different uh, bodies including assistant director general of horticulture icr new delhi then uh, horticulture and agriculture commissioner and now at present he is the director of <coughs> directorate of knowledge management at the delhi icr and a formal introduction will be done by our director he is also joining soon and dr malhotra is also expected within another 2 uh, 3 minutes there was uh, he was thinking it is for the that is the that was happen so we will have after this tomorrow we will have a session on marketing our experiences and uh, sharing experience sharing session uh, myself and then a few of our licensees also will share their experience that's what we are planning <coughs> and uh, 27th monday probably we will not have any lecture that is a holiday also for many so 28th onwards we'll resume i will let you know in due course and uh, as yesterday we were telling the boot camp is scheduled for uh, 5th and 6th of december and i think many people already applied so please do take your decision immediately because we have to make the arrangements and then uh, <coughs> we also have limitation of our capacity and that uh, sessions in the boot camp will be in a hybrid mode so even if you are not here uh, except the visit to laboratories and experimental fields all other things you can all other lectures you can listen through um, this uh, uh, zoom meeting id same meeting id so you will not miss any classes except the physical visit to cpcri and the uh, facilities here so in, if you have any other suggestion or anything now we can use this this time till our speaker join sir good evening sir good evening sir so anybody having mct technology medium chain triglyceride technology any institute tan tanjore it is sir commercially they are developing it seems it is yet to be oh, yeah. tanjore that our nistam national institute of food technology thank you sir Habar sir, you are on. You are already joined, I think. Hello. I am there. I am there already. Yeah, yeah. So, my dear participants, if you have any questions uh, directly to direct our director, he is actually the inventor of that um, uh, calpresa technology. So, if anything you want to get more information, kindly use this in, this time. Uh, we have another two three minutes. Uh, by that time, our speaker will be joining. Kindly let us know anything is required from CPCRI. Yeah, that also. Yesterday we had a session on uh, concurrent export. promotion and marketing aspects the program Ajay, program. that is my dipti was there i think yes okay 
and uh, I think some of our licenses also attending, sir. I think, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Udupu is there? You are telling something? Yeah. Huh? So yesterday he was there. Udupu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satana Nudupa. Ah, Satana Nudupa. Okay, he is attending. Okay. Then uh, Eramala Service Cooperative Bank people. Okay, okay. Then Nira. Then Nira also there, sir. Acha, they are all there. Okay. Tomorrow we are planning to give them as some 10-15 minutes slot. Acha, okay. Yeah. So that their experience can be. They will be sharing their experience. Yeah. Okay. Instead of we speak uh, that uh, <laughs> those who successful in the field they will be more. So by and large, what is the experience and how is the perception? Uh, yeah, everybody is, nobody told it is bad. Eh? <laughs> Hello? I think meanwhile, if anybody is there, they can share their experience also. Yeah. So, shims, shims growing and uh, that some fishery sector aspects ah. are there. We, we, we are trying to get somebody from CMF, CAFT. Okay, CAFT. Uh, no, who is actually a specialist in packaging, but uh, she may be knowing other things also. We will see. Okay. Otherwise, we'll have uh, one session later. Sir, good afternoon. Yeah. Your good evening. My name is Sanesh. Uh, uh, I am... Uh, I am from Vadagara actually. So okay. right now, right now I am attending a uh, course for value addition for millet, KVK Castle okay. Board. Oh, so uh, my question is there any uh, fund support for setting a unit in my area for uh, millet value addition? I don't know related to this, but uh, my plan to make a, a value addition unit in here. How much it may cost? Actually, uh, three, four missionary we need. Mm -hmm. In that, I have not uh, made any uh, proposal. I just getting the training from uh, KVK. So my future plan is to set up a unit here for millet value addition. Millet One is, uh, no, actually, see, I think millet, uh, we, right now we don't have an idea, but I think district... Sir, actually, the, all, all these things, uh, distinct industry center will provide support. Same. Yeah, they will support. And in addition, 30% uh, incentive, subsidies also there. No, in addition to that, I think uh, let him contact our uh, that uh, military research institute at Hyderabad. Yeah. I think certainly they will help him. Because there is a special scheme for that, especially this year, this yeah. since yeah, yeah. it is international year of millet. So I think you can have a word with uh, our uh, Rai, uh, sorry Millet Research Institute at Hyderabad. Okay, you, okay, you, okay. You just Google it, you will get all okay. the details. You can yeah, contact yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. I think meanwhile, uh, Dr. Malhotra has joined, I think. Has joined, yeah. So uh, let us start formally. Good evening, Malhotra, sir. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, it is a very pleasant thing to listen to you and I request our director, Dr. Hebar sir, to welcome our uh, lecture, I mean, speaker of this week, evening. Respected Malhotra ji, project director, uh, this uh, DKMA, uh, Pusa, New Delhi, and uh, Dr. Murli Dharan, and all the participants. I think uh, this is uh, almost now a week. I think we have been uh, through with this Kalpa Startup Masterclass Series 2023. 
and uh, today we have a special guest in fact i think uh, i think one of the renowned horticulturist we have dr suresh malhotra i think he was he has served quite a long period as a principal scientist at the icr new delhi i think one of the polished administrator also he has worked extensively in uh, as a director a director of horticulture uh, then uh, uh, director of agriculture also and now he is the project director in uh, knowledge management so i think that is that is the most important thing i think today he will be talking on that aspect also uh, that is very important so either in horticulture or agriculture i think if any of you have any doubts or any clarification i think this is the greatest opportunity i think he is the one who can i think uh, help you the best i believe so i think uh, malhotra ji once again we are gratefully thankful to you i think you have accepted your invitation i know that uh, you have a very busy schedule in spite of that you have come for this online chat i think it is great so i think the floor is yours sir i think uh, uh, Thank you, you can so speak much. Your- Yeah, be- yeah, before good, yeah. good afternoon, good evening. Okay, Doctor Murli, then want yeah. to say something. Sir, before uh, uh, sir, one more thing. We were actually be- just before we end uh, joining, there was a discussion on millets. In okay. Sudan, the year of millets uh, proposal was uh, tabled in the UN by our Malhotra Sir Board. Okay. That is an offer. So that that we are indebted to you, the country itself, for uh, making this a success. Thank you, sir. So now to you. Sir. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Heber. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Director of a very esteemed institute, Central Plantation Crop Research Institute, and uh, uh, my good friends, Dr. Heber, as well as Dr. Murli Dharan. I know uh, I have a, a very good, I mean, a bonding and relation with the uh, with the with the Central Plantation Crop Research Institute. When I was ADG, I know. we have worked together and uh, many issues were resolved together whenever uh, any issue came related to plantation crops i am really very happy to be with you all and i could see a, a, a large uh, um, gathering i should say that people they have come over here and they they are here uh, uh, through online mode they are linked with us and i have been asked to just uh, deliver a presentation and share my views with you all uh as i have been told that this is a, a sort of a training program what i should give the name or a kind of interaction where startups and all other people are linked with it as i have been told and under the iptm as well as under the another capacity building program this is this is a program which has been assigned to the cpcri and cpcri is doing it in a better way i know whenever they organize any program they do it in an organized way and uh, and and uh, a quality discussion always takes place so as dr haber told uh, mentioned and um, uh, told about the about this uh, about the introduction and all other things uh, uh, at the end uh, we can uh, keep our questions ready with us so we would like to give more time to question answer session also so i have just uh, uh hurriedly i have just dressed my powerpoint presentation so i'll just uh, yeah, uh, share share yeah, the screen share and share yeah i'll just share the screen and uh, and then we'll accordingly move yes, so sir. will it, is it visible yes sir you can go for that uh, slide mode sir now it is in the other mode yeah now it has come sir well, one, one more down one slide you, let me see it is moving sir one yeah. more uh yeah it is coming sir it's fine perfect sir well thank yeah. you so much thank you sir uh, the topic allotted to me is icr repository for knowledge management in agriculture i welcome you all participants in this program i'm really happy that uh, here uh, uh, participants are from the different different sectors and uh, they 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 are here because they have shown their interest to learn more uh, about about uh, uh, plantation crops in particular agriculture in general so i would like to just uh, uh, give my presentation on icr repository for knowledge management in agriculture because icr is the apex body 
a lot of information are generated through a large setup which the country has. So ICR is the big setup in the country. 113 research institutions are there. And then apart from these 73, uh, 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 all India coordinated research programs are also there. So a lot of informations are available, a lot of knowledge is available and that knowledge management itself is a big task. And uh, whenever we speak about knowledge management, then we need to really know that what kind of knowledge documents are available, those knowledge documents can be appreciably used. Because whenever, whenever we decide to start any kind of uh, entrepreneur pro program or some startup program, we need to gather the knowledge on that area. And we should know all nitty gritties before we switch over to any new program or we, if we are going to launch any new program, we need to really uh, uh, gather the informations and we need to have the knowledge and informations available with us. As you all are aware that agriculture in India has made greater stride and our production has gone to 6.5 times, uh, 50 million ton to 323 million ton. Similarly, for horticulture, it has gone up to 25 to 350 million ton as I am taking independent uh, 1947 as the base year, 1950, because the latest data available with us is 1950-51. So considering this base, 6.5 times food grain rise has taken place, 14 times horticulture. This way we have become the self-sufficient in case of uh, food grains as well as in case of horticulture. There are few exceptions also there as oil seeds where there is a shortage of uh, 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 oil seeds, edible oils in the country. But special mission has also been started for this, uh, for that program. As I have mentioned that here production has increased, productivity led growth has also taken place. How the transformation in agriculture has taken place. There are few points, genetic resource management and then propagation techniques, rootstock technology, plant architecture, engineering, irrigation efficiency, and then efficient management of the pests. So there are several things which you can see that there's a backup of the technologies, developmental initiatives, policy support. These all have helped in uh, uh, enhancing the production and production of our country. So accordingly, knowledge-powered solutions, they have made the impact. That is the point which I want to mention. But knowledge is power. So uh, friend Francis Bacon, he mentioned that knowledge itself is power. So there are many instances where different kind of theories have been given related to this knowledge, where personal, procedural and propositional uh, aspects have been discussed by the Platonic theory. And uh, there are several examples that in the past, whosoever was having knowledge, he was having the power. So this kind of uh, uh, development has taken and uh, taken place. So knowledge refined and adopted uh, that leads to the economic development and wellness. It's, it's, it's uh, very much obvious about this. An application of knowledge in agriculture has taken place. If you, if we see in the different centuries, uh, uh, the development uh, development in agriculture has taken place. Either it's a 19th century, 20th century. Now we are in 21st century, where uh, discovery th that is the major part, where GM cultivars, nano mechanization, satellite based precision farming, smart farming system, drone. These all are being used. So you can we can see that now we are passing through a different phase in agriculture. So application of knowledge in agriculture has helped through the various plan periods. If we say agriculture has been introduced in the more potential areas. And input use has also increased in the potential areas. And, and potential crop in potential area has been introduced. That's why the transformation in agriculture has taken place. Because of the changes which we are noticing today. These all happened only because of... Uh, uh, these plan periods which government of India introduced, but several challenges are also being faced. But science and technology uh, tools, they, they, they can help us a lot. And a uh, lot of technology informations are generated, have been generated, farmers have adopted, uh, either it is related to uh, uh, management of the resources and then knowledge led innovations are also there. And those have contributed in economic development of our country. So process of knowledge generation, it is important to know, you know that this, there are several research institutions where data is available. So this data is of no use until unless it is converted into information. So data is an unprocessed facts and figures. 
So those are required to be converted into the information and they are, those informations are required to be made meaningful and useful context. Then only it will be called as information. So then information is converted into the knowledge. So this is a process how the data and uh, knowledge journey takes place and knowledge when we gain, we become more wise. So knowledge diffusion models are different. Knowledge diffusion models are there. So I'll, I'll just quickly skip few of the slides because uh, I know that your requirement is little different. So I'll come to the major point, but before that, some introductory portion is required to be uh, brought before you. So knowledge generation in agriculture, how it, how it has started. So there are so many varieties. Production system, protection system has been developed. So one part is creation of the knowledge, another part is dissemination of the knowledge. So both things are very important. And uh, to, to do this, uh, uh, the first horticulture resource information system was developed together. I know CPCRI has also taken the initiative in this context. First time it started at IHR and then the CPCRI has also done some kind of horticulture research information system. Now many, many institutes, they are having the resource information systems. Those are available with, this, with them. So those information systems are a guiding, I should say, system to the user where he will get detailed information about the available knowledge and technology uh, where those could be effectively used. So one, one institute which I am heading as a director, that's the Directorate of Knowledge Management in Agriculture. So this is the institute which, uh, uh, which addresses the problems and it is it acts as a Directorate of Knowledge Management acts as a knowledge center and clearing house of the ICR information relating to research and development in agriculture, animal husbandry, fisheries and other allied uh, sciences. So this way, uh, Directorate of Knowledge Management assume importance. Several publications have been made. I am just providing this information to our uh, participants that these are the handbooks which are published by the ICR through uh, our Institute Directorate of Knowledge Management. So these all publications are uh, uh, knowledge documents which are being utilized by all agriculture stakeholders, beginners in agriculture if anybody is there they can gain knowledge through these publications. So these are the publications which are used by, uh, by farmers and uh, progressive farmers, students, researchers, and then even industry, they also use these information. Policy makers, these are the handbooks on the different, different areas. Seven handbooks are available with us. Similar kind of other publications are also uh, published from the Directorate of Knowledge Management. And uh, these are the publications which relates to different, different areas. And these are free of cost publications. Few of them are priced. All handbooks are priced publications. And few publications are free of cost, which are available on the website. Those could also be downloaded. Then we have research journals and magazines. Few of the magazines are also very popular. Uh, uh, Indian horticulture, Indian farming. These are the very informative magazines. So our uh, 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 participants, they can uh, just note down from the website also, they can gather the information that yes, these, these are the information which are available. Uh, these all informations are public, uh, are available on public domain because Indian farming, uh, we publish at uh, at monthly interval, horticulture we publish it bi-monthly, it's an uh, uh, issue. And, and this way, all articles are available on the website and the participants can also take knowledge uh, information about that one. So there are several knowledge gaps which are existing. We used to tell that, yes, climate change is happening, but how we can mitigate that climate change effect, that is the point before us. So here, climate resilient varieties are available, water and nutrient management, efficient uh, uh, resource utilization, soil management, conservation practices. These all are the points which are usually advocated for adoption purpose. So. Here, uh, as I mentioned about the varieties, there are several varieties which are now being used. Our participants, if anybody wants to start the seed business, he can start the seed business. Varieties are notified. Those notified varieties, seed production, they can undertake and uh, they can get the license uh, for their seed business if they want to do. One is seed production, another is seed business. So both opportunities are there, both could be done. Similarly, soil and uh, fertility management, 
we need to gain the knowledge on uh, soil and fertility management aspect so a lot of uh, informations are available soil health card government of india issued to the 10.7 crore farmers because in the cycle 1 in the cycle 2 10.3 crore uh, uh, cards were issued the basic objective was that the resources should be optimally utilized uh, we should not just give a standard dose of fertilizers on the basis of the soil health card recommendations or soil health soil test report recommendations should be uh, uh, given and uh, accordingly fertilizer should be applied to the soil so here i call upon and uh, ask our uh, participants they, that out of the participants if anybody wants to start uh, a soil uh, soil testing lab if he wants to establish government of india supports for establishment of the soil testing lab and there are some affordable uh, soil testing equipment equipments which are also available with us and icr has devised such uh, soil testing equipments so those informations could be gathered and mirda prakshak the name of that uh, equipment is mirda prakshak that could also be used so because we government wants that imbalanced use of fertilizer that should not happen and uh, different different areas they should use the balanced of balanced use of the fertilizers but on one part it has also been mentioned that if we want to rationalize the fertilizer use we need to uh, use the bio fertilizers rhizobia mesotobacter acetobacter rhizosprelum phosphate these are the microbials which are which are available and uh, those are very much helpful in uh, uh, enhancing the fertilizer use efficiency so this way this way uh, uh, we can uh, we can even cut the requirement of the chemical fertilizers so if any of the participants want to start his own business of bio fertilizers they can do it and uh, they, they can make their own lab and then they can start multiplying those microbials uh, 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 bio fertilizers and then accordingly those bio fertilizers could be used because these days bio fertilizers are now being promoted because they help in cutting uh, the fertilizer chemical fertilizer requirement of uh, of 25% 25 to 30% there are even instances so this is also one of the area where we can think upon and our research institutions they have come out with their own different strains and those strains are available those strains could be picked and can be taken from the research institutions and uh, business could be started for uh, bio fertilizers uh, uh, production as well as uh, uh, marketing that part could be look, looked after leaf analysis laboratory can also be established now so th there is a provision now with the government of india uh, under the uh, 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 program which is called as sustainable sustainable agriculture program under that program leaf analysis laboratory if anybody wants to establish that could be done because leaf analysis is done for the perennial crops for annual crops there is no 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 uh, i mean uh, we have very simple procedure we will take the soil sample and we will get it tested once the crop is harvested annual crops are harvested we can very easily do that but in case of perennials we do not harvest the crop uh, crop will remain because those are the perennials so leaf analysis is the only technique which will give you an idea that what kind of status is there and if there is any shortage of uh, nutrients or micronutrients accordingly those could be applied to the plants but now nano agriculture has come into the picture i was agriculture commissioner at that time and we gave the permission to the first nano urea product so that nano urea product has been produced by the ifco so uh, if marketing part anybody wants to take care ifco is ready to do that if anybody wants to to establish or uh, start any uh, pesticide and fertilizer outlet they can start so there is one program with the ministry of chemical and fertilizers if any of the participants want to do that business that they can do it and they can start a, a shop or some outlet related to uh, fertilizers as well as uh, uh, pesticides so this way they can start a clinic also so a clinic can also be plant clinic can also be started from that place so i have already mentioned that there are several bio control agents bio pesticides bio fertilizers which have been uh, developed by the icr research institutions through research those could be taken 
and uh, we have agro innovate india limited through which uh, we can uh, uh, procure those uh, uh, i mean biocontrol agents biopesticides as well as biofertilizers and could be put up at business opportunities are there uh, because these all products have demand in the organic farming so biostimulants is another new area which is now coming up biostimulants are the products uh, which enhance the uh, nutrient use efficiency and it enhances the capacity of the plant to uh, uh, absorb more nutrients from the soil and it also provides tolerance to the stress and also improves the quality of the produce so such biostimulants are seaweed extract humic acid fulvic acid amino acid cell free culture vitamins protein hydrolytes these all are the biostimulants so these biostimulants are very important these days and these biostimulants are gaining importance and many startups have come forward and uh, they, the startups startups are now they have started doing trading on the biostimulants this is a kind of uh, new area which is coming up in agriculture so new molecules new pesticides are coming and i have already mentioned about this one those are required to be taken but we need to see that how we can address the local issues uh, recently uh, invasive pests they came so if you start the plant cl clinic you can have informations related to insect pest and diseases where you can guide the people you can start your own clinic as well as advisory services and now government is also providing support so you can uh, reach to your uh, concerned state where you belong to a uh, state department of agriculture you can approach to them and you can ask them for providing such informations another point is uh, post harvest losses are required to be reduced but how this could, could be reduced because here losses could be reduced through post harvest management so post harvest management we can establish a uh, uh, cold chain we can establish cold storage so these all are the business opportunities which could be taken forward so if we have to reduce the post harvest losses particularly in horticulture crop then we can uh, uh, promote cold chain cold chain means right from uh, 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 harvesting of the crop from the field to to further uh, uh, sending it to the cold storage as well as to the market through that cold chain system where pre cooling post harvest handling operations are also taken care of and uh, then those are taken to um, uh, uh, to 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 the cold storage as well as to the market so marketing of the fresh fruits and vegetables because now several mobile apps are also available those mobile apps information could be used e nam program government of india has started electronic national agriculture market system has been started where farmers they can use that platform and then accordingly they can get a kind of information that how they where they should sell their produce so such informations are now available and a few farmers are using but now many more farmers they need to register themselves on that e name nam platform so drone is another area which is now coming up where uh, our participants they can uh, get a license and they can become a pilot for uh, using uh, 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 these drones and this drone training is also provided and even they can start a uh, 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 farm machinery center they can establish custom hiring center so called so our participants if they are interested they can start their own uh, uh, farmer uh, 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 they can start their own custom hiring center where, where they can provide such facilities to the farmers on higher basis and then then they can charge and then they can do uh, spraying through these drones also through uh, 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 and several other machineries could also be used so this is one example just i wanted to because i was directly involved in uh, making the guidelines for use of drones in agriculture when i was agriculture commissioner and those guidelines were passed on to all states we are now Uh, those guidelines are now being used for application of the pesticides and fertilizers so uh, now the important part is that production is happening but safe produce should come so we we should be in a position to make available uh, safe safe uh, fru uh, fruits and vegetables and other uh, horticulture produce to the people because now production is there but quality aspect is coming into picture but how it could be done 
so where certification system comes comes into picture if we have to export then the uh, uh, global gap we were utilizing but now we have ind gap available with us where not only for export but also for our indigenous market ind gap standardization could be done where we can have a kind of uh, branding and uh, ind gap standards could be followed and those produce could be declared as safe because those have undergone uh, through a certification system where good agriculture practices have been followed in producing that particular uh, product so this way certification system if anybody wants to come in into the certification system they can also get a training on separately on uh, this certification system they can become a impaneled certifier uh, if any of the participants if he is interested they can become a certified uh, uh, certifier they can become and they can immediately they can do a kind of certification impanelment could be done but they need to get a training on that part because it's again a, 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 a another area where a uh, lot of informations are required to be uh, uh, collected then another point is reducing the water footprint that is again in the agenda of the government that how we can increase the irrigation efficiency so irrigation efficiency could be increased through through the uh, uh, micro irrigation systems so micro irrigation systems should be uh, promoted and uh, our participants if anybody wants to start the business of micro irrigation systems they can start and they can uh, 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 have a kind of advisory services they can provide they can uh, establish they can establish even after sale services those could also be attended so many areas are there where we can pitch in and we can further uh, take help in in starting our business so there are many startups they they might be having some knowledge related to that one so they can even work out the schedules on the basis of available information they can validate those schedules and then accordingly they can guide to the farmers and they can provide some advisory services in turn they can get some uh, uh, some uh, i mean advisory amount and all other things that could also be done so horticulture cluster development program has also been started by the government government of india because here everybody points out that farmers they are not getting the profit why farmers are not getting the profit why our yield levels are low so we, then then the government was asked that government should prove it that yes high yield could be achieved our research institutions are achieving high yield but yield levels are low at farmers uh, field so how we can increase that yield so then 12 clusters were identified initially and industries were uh, identified and five industries have come forward and 100 clusters have been uh, identified so we are 12 crop clusters and 100 farmers clusters have been identified where uh, those demonstrations are now being done and piloting has been done and this pilot scale testing is now being followed where horticulture cluster development will take place so there are clusters for different crops for mango for grapes for pineapple for banana for pomegranate for apple so these are the clusters which have been identified because in clusters if anything is to be done uh, where government can easily help in in uh, providing the good inputs and then uh, in a larger area uh, machinery could also be used some cluster brands could also be promoted and this will help in many ways in uh, promoting the products and uh, even they will if if volume is there they will also get a good market so market support will also be there through this horticulture cluster development programs and uh, 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 the benefit of this horticulture cluster development program could also be taken and uh, participants they may go to their states horticulture development to get more information about that one then space application and now uh, Uh, anyway this is a different informations which may not be of direct use to the participants but here knowledge driven public private ventures are there so many ventures are there where uh, hybrid seed production of vegetable crops could be done and then drip sprinkler system and fertigation system installation that's also one of the area greenhouse technology polyhouse shed out shed nut load tunnels mulching these all are the areas biopesticide micro propagation disciplines export of the fresh fruits 
export of the processed fruits and vegetable products. These are all are the areas where uh, 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 some startups they can start their work, but from where to get the knowledge? So here, digital knowledge resources are available. Indian Agriculture Statistical Research Institute, with the help of different uh, 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 research organizations, different modules, digital knowledge modules have been developed, and those knowledge modules are available for uh, different different crops, micro irrigation system, climate resilient agriculture, rice, then uh, 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 then also for the pulses, then for northeastern area. Fisheries, mage, wheat, seed spices, sugarcane, animal science for the different different area. Uh, uh, digital knowledge information systems are available where they can get the detailed knowledge about the particular area. Uh, they can do it and they can note down the website. Website is written there. So through this, uh, uh, through these knowledge resources, they can enhance their wisdom and they can. Uh, further enhance their capacity and knowledge on that area so krishi kosh is also one of the another knowledge, uh, digital repository where mostly students they are uh, taking benefit of this where thesis journals and articles those have been kept into so this is a krishi kosh another uh, 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 krishi kosh e granth it is called as this is this is available so on, on website these informations could be taken and help could be taken Similarly, krishi.icr.gov, this is a krishi program which is called as Agricultural Knowledge Resources and Information System Hub for Innovations. This is again a, a, a program where agriculture knowledge resources and informations are available and those informations are available on this portal for the, uh, for, for the farmers to the stakeholders, they can use this one. And then e-resources, again, these e-resources are for researchers, teachers, students, policy planners. They can use these informations. And seed portal, again, it's useful for the, for the seed producer. They can get the information. Uh, similar kind of seed portals are available with all institutes, I think I can, I can say. And, uh, 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 and, and through those seed portals, information could be gathered that which variety of seed is available with them and they can get the breeder seed and then if they want to do certified seed production program, they can also do if they want to establish mother block, any nursery, that aspect could also be taken care of. So nursery establishment is again another, another area. And then another program is called as Kiran. This is a program knowledge innovation repository of agriculture for northeastern region. So for northeastern region, here, this is a program where repository of the information is there, where we can get the information related to northeastern region. And Krishi Vigyan Kendra Knowledge Network is also there. So these all are the knowledge uh, networks where we can get the information uh, related to particular area where the Krishi Vigyan Kendra is there, what kind of database is available, those could be taken. And similarly, HortiNet, this is again a program of APIDA where traceability system is there for horticulture product. This is mostly used by exporters. So whenever we have to do exportable production, we can uh, uh, have uh, knowledge of HortiNet, uh, where uh, uh, production of grapes, pomegranate, vegetables, mango, uh, or then citrus and other fruits could also be taken. So then Kisan Sarthi program, again, it's a two-way multilingual communication system, farmers and agriculture experts. Uh, they transfer the trust transmit the information uh, in the in the in the form of text images and audio videos this is again a, 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 a system of agriculture information resources which could be used then icr facebook this is a directorate of knowledge management where we are providing all informations on the facebook on the daily basis we are putting the informations because our research institutions 100 13 research institutions are there. So they have developed a lot of technologies. So one technology, one day, daily we are putting one information uh, on the uh, Facebook as well as on the Twitter. So these informations are available and our participants, they can go through, they can see that which information is of more use to them, then they can get the detailed knowledge on them, this one. And we have given the name of inventor as well as name of the institution where the research was conducted. So this way, information could be gathered 
So one technology daily we are putting on the Facebook and uh, Twitter. Uh, then uh, 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 what is expected from the knowledge-based system from the sustainable development of agriculture in general? There are several areas. We need to proliferate, proliferate the startups in agri-tech, fintech and R&D, smart farm infrastructure, sustainable and efficient utilization of resources, smart advisory, improved forecasting that could be done, enhanced production seeds inputs. Uh, I also mentioned that uh, you can also start the business increase smart manufacturing in agriculture and light sector, product specific management and traceability where certification system will come into picture, technology based risk mitigation, extensive use of the e-commerce. So improved value chain and market linkages, better quality of skilled human resource. So this way rural life would become technology driven. So this, this is the uh, uh, dream which has been mentioned. So there are several other uh, areas. I think this I'll skip this slide. But now the goal to be achieved by vision 2047 is that we need to become food secure and nutritionally secure country where prosperity and livelihoods prosperity that should happen in the rural population and India should emerge as a global powerhouse in the food system. So uh, sustainable natural resources ecosystems are required to be utilized. So these all are the areas. So. Uh, Millets, as Dr. Murli Dharan also mentioned, I got the opportunity to uh, present this the proposal of International Year for Millets at FAO, uh, FAO Rome uh, in the year 2018. The first proposal I presented and uh, 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 on behalf of Government of India, when I presented that proposal, it was accepted. 72 countries, they supported us. And, uh, and today we are celebrating in a big way so this is a kind of leadership and uh, which we are getting and we are providing to the world that how to take for the, for the uh, these millets and millet business which we, we need to take forward. 